If you want to operate in the modern, global, massively interconnected world, you have to operate as if you're in a modern, global, massively interconnected world. And that requires you to have a different way of thinking about the world. For a very long time, security has always been spoken about using military or martial imagery. The better imagery is something much more epidemiological or something much more around public health. Just like with the pandemic, there's multiple layers of things we have to do to keep ourselves safe. Everybody needs to be practicing good data hygiene. Don't click on attachments sent from random people. Make sure that you have antivirus software. Make sure everything is updated. Make sure you don't have open APIs and open ports that are vulnerable to known attacks. Digital hygiene really is about taking stock of your technology, of your data, of your behavior, and saying, what do I need to protect? And then once you do that, you can actually look at your organization through the same lens and say, how is the digital hygiene of the organization? The story I like to tell with ransomware is about cyber resiliency. And, and cyber resiliency isn't just defending against ransomware or cyber attacks. It's it's protecting your business against any of the, the things that could disrupt it. Um, you know, that could be a natural disaster. Uh, it could be a hardware failure. Of course, it could be ransomware, a disgruntled employee. There's lots of reasons that uh, things can go wrong. If you're a really good IT admin and you want to have the best security posture you can possibly have, the assumption should always be not if I'll be infected, but when I'll be infected. And as long as you have that mentality and you go through procedures and rehearsals of, uh, of being infected, pretending you're infected, pretending to bring your, your, those machines back up and running as if they were hit with ransomware, even though they weren't, that's going to set yourself up for success. A cyber resiliency strategy is a way for the business to accomplish staying operational while under attack. It includes a cybersecurity component as well as a data protection component, and it accounts for the resources needed to defend against the attack or even recover quickly uh, from it. As part of a cyber resiliency plan, organizations will do data classification assessments so that they understand what parts of the business are more critical. The biology that keeps us alive that strange or danger feeling that you get, that unique feeling of something feels wrong in your gut, doesn't really apply when you're reading an email. The best sort of cyber resilient strategy you want to have, at the very top is going to be your users. Educating your users to make sure they don't click on what they're not supposed to. One of the things that we've been passionate about for the past few years is uh, cybersecurity awareness training. And if you think about it, a lot of other industries have compliance training that are a mandatory annual education to protect privacy, to protect data. Cybersecurity is really no different. And if anything, it requires more training because it's a much more dynamic landscape with more frequent changes. With computer-based training, you click next 15 times, you identify the variant of ransomware or the variant of malware, you get a little certificate, they put a gold star on the certificate, put it on the fridge, and you're done for the year. That does not address the problem. We found that if you only educate your users once a year with the standard test or phishing simulation, um, you're going to have around 30, 35% of your employees click on that phishing link, enter their information. That's a problem. We found that if you educate them at least once a month, you can reduce that down to 10%. Security awareness training goes a lot farther than protecting your users from, from malware. It also teaches them a lot about uh, scams and, and things that just seem off. And, and oftentimes, if you, you know, trust that little inkling of like, hey, this just smells funny, or maybe I should ask the IT department before opening that email, you can go a long way in preventing that entire headache. It's key that your defense posture tools, techniques, procedures, education, matches the blended attack that the adversary is doing against you. When you click on a URL that they're not supposed to click on, it's going to a malware command and control server to download a malicious payload, or it's for a phishing link to gather financial credentials or credentials for whatever they're trying to get into. And so both of those are just URLs and IPs. And so that's our second layer. That's URL and IP reputation. That's our bright cloud layer. And that may be only about 90 to 95% effectiveness, but that only has to work on the 10% that fail. And so you've got around 1% to 2% falling to, to the next layer. And so this is where our strongest layer, our endpoint protection, analyze a whole bunch of topical information uh, on that file, leverage it with like the 50 billion file behavior re records we have on our cloud database to let us know, hey, look, we've seen that file before or something like it. We know it's bad. 
go ahead and quarantine it before it ever has a chance to execute. And that layer is about 99.97% effective. And so ultimately you're, you're dealing with fractions of a percent as far as chances of being infected um, if that layer were to fail. And then we have another layer, which is based on heuristics. Heuristics layer is, is very similar to like the blacklist heuristics that, that you're familiar with from antivirus that you go buy at a store. Now, oh, as always, at the very bottom, you have a reliable backup solution. Early on, when ransomware started, not many businesses understood the value of having backups. But as ransomware and, and other forms of cyber attacks started to proliferate, uh, then customers started to realize that they needed that backup copy so that if they didn't want to pay the extortion ransom, they could just recover their data from the backups. Carbonite aims to be the data protection platform for small businesses. We have data protection solutions uh, that address many of our customer needs, whether uh, the small businesses want to protect uh, an individual server or entire environment, whether they want to uh, protect the endpoint or cloud applications like Microsoft 365, we also have multiple deployment models that facilitate how small businesses can consume data protection products. We have a hybrid model where the customer gets to keep a copy of the backup locally and then sends another copy to the cloud. And so if the hacker attacks the local environment, the local copy, you still got that extra copy in the cloud. Ultimately, the only way to combat this is really that defense in depth sort of mindset. You really need a team of people watching your network, and if you can't afford to build it yourself, you're gonna to need to outsource it. Pair that with the best detection technology, educate your workforce, and the insurers are gonna look more and more uh, towards technology to help them verify that you're doing that. You can't build a wall around your operations because your operations have to exist in the world. And we just have to come to terms with that fact. The fact that sometimes it's cybercrime season, just in the same way as sometimes it's flu season. And sometimes there'll be a pandemic. And once we know what it does, and once we know how to mitigate it, then we all do that. And we keep moving forward.